Party people, Tony Rowe here, playing MB0310 in a rapid game. Let us go, man. Okay, I'm gonna go Knight F3. It's my first rapid game in a while. I'm just gonna stick to my guns here. Let's be honest. Tony Rowe's a little rusty. Cut me some slack. Party mic is operational for those of you who are, uh, you know, worried about whether or not my mic is obnoxious as hell. Yes, it is. MB0310, of course he plays the modern. Okay, we'll go G3, G6, or Bishop G7 rather, and then I'm going to go D4. If I go Bishop G2, that allows E5. Like Bishop G2 here, E5, I'm not into that. It is playable, but not my thing necessarily. Ooh, we're going to have a Leningrad. All right, boss, let's do it. So this transposes to a Dutch Leningrad. I'll go B3. It is, um, it's also possible for black to go C5 here. I think that's a very reasonable move. D6. Should I go C4 or Bishop B2 first? I'm going to go bishop b2. I think that there are some positions where maybe I wouldn't want to go c4, but um, if you play b3, I think you're kind of pot committed to go bishop b2, right? Shout out to everyone out there. Hope uh, hope you guys are having a good... This will probably come out on the weekend, so I hope you guys are having a good weekend. Maybe like Friday night or something. I'm playing a 20 plus 5 game here. I plan on playing some rated over-the-board... Uh, events this year, maybe like March, April time frame. That's what I'm, I'm sort of trying to get myself in shape, doing a lot of calculation stuff. Um, trying to get my openings into some like uh, space repetition style files so that I can train, train them. Just sort of get back into fighting shape here. So I figured, hell, let's play a rapid game. We'll see how that goes for me. I'm 22.92 provisional. Sad how far I've fallen. I actually feel like I was a stronger chess player in like 2016 than, <laughs> than uh, I am now. Yeah, so there are some like weird move order things going on here that, that can be kind of hard to keep track of. Like it's possible to go d5 here, I guess. Because he's not gone c6. Um... The tricky thing is like black has these ideas where he's going to go e5 d takes e5 knight to g4 exploiting this pin along the you know with my pawn on e5 it's pinned to my bishop on b2 and so even in positions where obviously it looks like i have more attackers than he has defenders he has this little switcheroo here and so you can go knight b to d2 e5 d takes e5 knight g4 knight c4 and he'd have one, two, three, four attackers, and I'd have one, two, three defenders. Did I count that right? Plus, like, queen d5 check in the mix, so. It's also possible to try and irritate him with this move. I have vague recollections of, like, uh, knight here. No, maybe not here. If you guys haven't tell the Dutch, if you if you can't tell, the Dutch Leningrad is on my systems to really study. I've had like reasonable results against it, so I haven't had to do all that much. Is the unfortunate truth. So presumably, if Knight G five trying to get in here, he's going to go here. 
And I was I was wondering about this move, honestly. But maybe he just goes planning just a5. A6, exploiting this sort of stuff. But I'm going to go here, actually. I kind of like the idea of this move. I like the looks of it. So I took a long time, and then I made a classic Tony Rowe calculation error, where I, I just, like, like this is a constant thing in my in my chest. Like, I just decide, like, I have, like, a lot of these complication, uh, uh, ca calculation, like, sort of idiosyncrasies, you know, like, I, and I'm, I think all club players do, especially adults, like, you kind of go through your life learning chess by yourself or maybe with a coach, but you build up a bunch of bad habits in your calculation. And like one of the ones that I always notice that I do is there's two, there's like, uh, and sometimes it's both at the same time, like I'll get into a position. And like the first one is I'll just convince myself that a certain move is the move no matter what. And like, if my intuition goes like, you know, Move X is the move. I'll analyze move X for five minutes straight. And even if it doesn't work, I'll be like, this is the move. You just have to keep looking at it. And then 10 minutes goes by and it's not the move. <laughs> and, then, and then I've wasted 10 minutes on one move instead of going like, OK, this move X looks like after two minutes, like it's maybe not working or I need to work more on it. And then I'll, I'll go to move Y and move Z and then maybe find a good move. Uh, so, so that's the first one. And then the second one is maybe you analyze like move X, move Y and move Z in a regular sort of, you know, fashion, properly dividing up your time, trying to figure out which move is the best move and none of them look good. And so you go to move A and without even looking at it, you just go back, ah, move A and then you play it for some reason without analyzing it. Like you're so happy to psychologically find a new idea. Oh, wow. This guy is going buck here. I feel like that moves very bad after knight D4, but... Knight d4 threatening to jump in either of these holes, but also threatening to take this at the same time. And unfortunately, he doesn't really like one thing that might come to mind after knight d4 is like a move like knight e4 or something where you're trying to exploit the pin along this long diagonal to stop me from going here. But wouldn't I just go here anyway? He'd be he'd almost be forced to give up like the queen for a bunch of stuff like. OK, so let's just calculate for a second. Knight d4, knight e4, for instance, knight e6, bishop b2. I'm down a piece. I'm up a queen for a piece okay and then he'd have choices presumably he'd take this then i would go back and he'd have a piece for yeah it's possible but i can't believe that that's good i mean it's just, it would just be very hard for me to believe that that's good he has knight c5 stopping knight here but then i just take this right yeah, okay, I'm going to play this. The, the, B5 looks insanely suspicious. <laughs> Just so incredibly suspicious. This uh, this video sponsored you by Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. I'm trying to quit Diet Pop. It's obviously going great. This is actually only pop number two of the day, so it actually sort of is going great, but not as great as I'd like. close down all these other windows here i haven't moved my board yet have i no okay good that's a classic thing that i do i'm experimenting with lighting as you can see it's dark in my room today and I'm, I'm going double i got double light i think it's a little bright also it's very hard when you have glasses to to properly light light stuff there's been very little chess content here <laughs> for that i apologize I was kind of hoping like when I got paired against someone who's 1800, no offense to 1800s, that I could make this like a really instructive game about like, you know, a longer game about exploiting minute mistakes by an 1800 player. But it. OK, so he goes knight to e5. And. Uh, 
I'm probably just taking this, let's be honest. I don't see anything better. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And if allowed, I'll probably just play like something like C4 or Knight back to D4. Sort of setup I'm looking for would just be C4, Knight C3, and then put this Knight back to D4. I feel like my position would be very harmonious after that. I do have to watch out for tactics along the B file because this Bishop on B2 is hanging. This sort of Knight C4 stuff is looming. Like, he could try to annoy me with rook b8, knight d4, knight c4, for instance. Because b takes c4, rook takes b2. I'd be curious what happens after b takes... So the, the line I'm looking at is rook b8, knight d4, knight c4, b takes c4, rook takes b2, and then maybe this move knight b3, trying to trap this rook. I don't think that works, though. Maybe, like, even just knight g4 and the long diagonal opens, then my rook is... Maybe you're vulnerable to something like rook b3, a b3, bishop takes a1, not to be advised. There, there would be similar problems after something like rook b8, c4, a6. It would be worse, presumably, because then knight takes c4 would hit a pawn. Now, it's not the end of the world. I could go rook b8, c4, a6, knight to a3, since knight takes c4, knight a3, or knight takes c4, knight takes c4 um, would defend. So that's possible. And the knight wouldn't really be that bad either. Eventually, you can come to c2 and then d4, or e3, but... It's also possible to go rook b8, knight takes a7. My knight would be looking at this juice, juicy square. One possible line, rook b8, bishop takes e5. Rook b5 then, I guess, but I just retreat the bishop. That can't be that bad either. Okay, so he's going to go bishop b7. No real threat to the d-pawn. I'm going to go c4 relatively quickly. I don't really have to wor wor worry about any tricks now, and this allows knight, knight d4 when my d-pawn is still protected adequately. I could go knight d4 here maybe and just get out of the way, but I, would be wor I have to worry about hanging the d-pawn. I'm not sure if it's all that se severe, but just because knight e6 is threatened, but... Knight e6 isn't going anywhere because he put, he put his bishop on b7, unfortunately. So the moment my knight hits d4, he's going to be very unhappy again. It might make sense to start getting some of these pieces off the, <laughs> the squares where this is going to hurt really bad. I don't know. Yeah, this is kind of um, typical, a little typical of lower rated players games. Um, There's kind of a, a thing in chess where, like, if you've just seen enough games... Okay, so he goes 94, which sort of signals to me that he wants some kind of checky-check business. There's there's looming discover tactics with, with bishop takes b2. I may just go here, block all that. It's also possible to just go knight d4 right away. That also looks quite tasty. Maybe I'll do that. It seems more to the point. But also development, guys. Um, I've got, like, sort of a New Year's resolution that especially in long games, like, because an another thing I don't do a lot of times when I'm calculating, which leads to a lot of blunders, is I don't just go, like, 
okay, I'm about to play knight d4. Does that move lose to anything? Which like feels like everyone should do that. And you know, a lot of times you do it instinctively, but I feel like I need to kind of like, it's one thing that I think causes a lot of blunders by me in retrospect is I play a move that looks aesthetically good or normal, but it loses to some stupid tactic. So I at least owe it to myself to check. Okay, let's just go knight d4. Yeah, so I think, um, like I was going to say before before the, um, my opponent and be moved, I, I feel like there's... Um, when you play stronger players, they kind of intuitively know where their pieces should go. And um, they it's just more likely that they're going to play moves that, that are in line with the demands of the position if that makes sense. So, you know, when I when I look at this game, it's like he played, obviously, the first six moves of the Dutch Leningrad, great. And then this move is probably not necessarily bad, but I don't think it's the best move. I think most people would start with, like, C6 here, for instance. But I don't think Knight B to D7 is terrible. He could still go... Well, maybe he can't, you know, maybe that, that's part of the problem is now you can't be after D5, you can't go C6 or it's not as easy to go C6 because C6, DC, you know, knight D4. But just and then when when he goes D5 and he goes B5, it's just like most strong players just kind of know that like this move looks ugly. Like, it, you know, right when he played it, you saw I went like I'm not saying I'm an insanely strong player, but right when he played it, you go like, oh, like, really? And then. Okay, so he played a move knight c5, guarding the, the e6 square. Well done, sir. And first instinct is b4, but it's tricky because knight takes c4 would hit my bishop. For that reason, one move that's calling out my name is just very simple queen c2, protecting c4, getting ready for b4. It's a sort of a normal move in this structure anyway. I could also just go knight c3. That looks perfectly reasonable. In a blitz game, I would have already played knight c3, but queen c2 comes to mind as a more nuanced try. I could also go knight, knight b to d2, but that seems weird to me. But maybe not bad, actually, because it's conceivable that actually f3 is the, the second best square for a, a second knight. You know, I'd be looking to go maybe here and here. I don't know. I'm not sure. Is queen c2 like super artificial though? Like is it just... The problem is if I go knight c3, it's just very hard for me to go b4 ever because this, this pawn is actually... Once you put a knight on c3, this doesn't do it anymore. This doesn't protect. So it, it would actually be very hard for me to get b4 and otherwise. Yeah. The problem is something like queen c2 a5, if then I just decide to go, okay, you got me, like knight c3, then you might have knight takes c4 anyway. b takes c4, bishop d4, because my knight on c3 is in the way of this defense, and I move my queen off defending d4 as well. I'm not sure if that works, but it's something to think about. It's also worth thinking about what happens if b4, knight takes c4, knight c3, just getting out of the way. When... I'm threatening his knight. If he moves it, then I get to thonk on e6 anyway. That's awfully sharp, though. I mean, and again, it's even possible, like, a line like b4, knight takes c4, bishop c3. Okay, where does his knight go? Something like knight e4, I think, makes the most sense. And then knight e6, and then he has, like, he could start thinking about queen sacks, like knight, knight here... Knight takes c3, bishop takes c3. Yeah, I'm not sure.
You know what? I think I am going to go here. I really hate the way this move looks for some reason. It just doesn't feel like it's going to be the right move, but... I'm going to go here anyway. Very transparent threat of B4. Um, but also something like maybe A5, like I said, Knight 2 to F3. Knight G5 would be a pretty serious threat there. If he took, I would probably take with the E pawn. The idea being to open up the E file against the weak E6 square, the backwards F6 pawn. There is something to consider here. Like, let's say A5, Knight 2 to F3, Knight takes F3 check, E takes F3, F4. Might possibly be annoying there. But my, when, I, when I mentioned it earlier, I thought, okay, if F4, that opens up this diagonal, so... He's clamping down on my bishop because there's a pawn there. Black is incentivized to kind of clamp down on that bishop and not allow it to be active after f4. Um, but I can switch diagonals, peek around the corner to maybe the e6 square. Okay, so he's going e6. It's really hard to believe. What are you doing after b4, homie? This looks good. Real talk. You know, it's funny, like, if he moves the knight, he actually just donated an extra pawn to my, to my same idea, unfortunately. I mean... It's... Yeah, really hard to believe. I'm just gonna play this, see what happens. Down to 10 minutes. Given the state of my opponent's position, though, I, I sort of feel like 10 minutes is going to be more than enough if I'm able to take, take more material off the board. I mean, black actually might be losing more than like just the exchange here. Like imagine a line, let's say knight a6, knight takes e6, queen d7, let's say. I'm not even sure that knight takes f8 is the best move. It could be that knight g7 is, is better. Uh huh. So he's just gonna sack the, the 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 knight. I don't get it. Unfortunately for him, I'm still threatening knight e6 after I take this, and he can't play d takes c4 now because of uh, bishop takes b7. What's his idea here? I think he's thinking maybe he's gonna go knight f3 check, but uh, yeah. Also, don't buy that. <laughs> Gets the bishop out of harm, but does not get the queen out of harm. Okay, so what's the point? Am I missing a point before I blunder horrifically? I don't see it. Let's jump into the liver here. I realize it's kind of like... I. So I have... Um, when I first started out playing chess, I, I was kind of a weird guy about chess. I, I got into it when I was um, 15 in high school. My earth science teacher told me that basically he looked at me he's like you're gonna join chess club and i was like okay he's like it'll help your grades and uh you'll like it and i was like i'm getting a 4.7 like <laughs> gpa i don't need to help my grades and he's like you're showing up and i was like okay and i think looking back on it he just needed people to show up so he got paid for running a chess club but i showed up nonetheless and I became like super obsessed with chess like right away. He wasn't wrong that I would love it. And once I realized you could like go to the store and buy books and like there were books upon books and ch I realized chess was super hard and you can get completely lost in it. I I started to really that's when it was all downhill for me. Um and so I Yeah, and, and so I, I studied a lot just straight out of the gate because once I, again, once I realized this was something you could research and study, I went buck. And uh, so, I you know, I was in chess club for maybe six months and I was studying and I, I, I even got a coach. Like I hooked up with a coach in the Cleveland area who was known to be pretty good. His name is Mike Jolson. Um, 
and I had a coach even before I was playing rated games. So like my first rating when I was 15, I had been playing for I don't know how long. I'd really have to like consult the the USCF logs, but I I think I was I, I think my first rating was like 1550 or something. Um which is pretty funny because I just got so obsessed with chess that I'm wondering if I should just let him go knight f3 check here because I, I feel like d4 is more annoying than... Oh, he can't go d4, all right. Come on, Tone. Come on. Just revoke my Lee Chess Master title. I mean, really, what even is it? But it's cool, though. It's cool. Let's be honest. Don't revoke it. The only thing I'm holding on to. Okay, I'm just going to go rook b1. Very simple move. But also, I have a, sort of a threat of... A discovered attack here with rook takes b7, bishop e5, bishop e5, rook takes b7 is a threat. Again, he can't go here because of here. He can't go here because of here. And uh, so he might have to move the bishop, something like bishop c6, bishop a8. Because again, even a knight move runs into the same discovered attack, just different. He could go c6 because now the queen would protect, but honestly, that looks so hideous. There's some really cute ideas after c6, actually, that I'm kind of looking at. Like, let's say. I'm trying to think of how what move order. So like c6, c takes d5, c takes d5, bishop takes e5, bishop takes e5, knight c4. With the threat of rook takes b7, queen takes b7, bishop uh, takes d5 check with a double attack. That's naughty. But because c6, c takes d5, c takes d5, bishop takes e5, bishop takes e5, takes e5, knight c4. I'm actually, with knight c4, I'm hitting the, this bishop too. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got sick last week. I'm. If, if you guys watched the last video, I mentioned that I was sick. And there's just like something It's just not right still. Like, I have, I have sleep apnea, and um, my sleep apnea is not well controlled, like, for, like, the past five days, because for whatever reason, I'm just, like, there's something, something when I got sick, it just, like, sent my sleep apnea real bad through the roof, so I'm not sleeping that well right now. <laughs> Hate it. It's tough to do anything when you're not sleeping well, let's be honest. Literally... <laughs> Literally on cue, I yawn. Okay, what an idiot. Come on, MB. 0310. Let's go. You guys use fitness trackers? I got a new fitness tracker. Let's see if I can. I got the Whoop 4.0. Check that out. Check that baby out. I've never had something make me feel so bad about myself. You know, like I go to jujitsu with this thing on. They're like, eh, just 600 calories. Like, fat boy. You could do better or like you wake up and there, you, you know, like the thing is this thing tracks like how much time you're actually sleeping. So you might go, go like turn off the lights at 11 and wake up at seven. You're like, eh, I got my eight hours. And then it goes like six hours and 50 minutes. And you're like, man, what am I doing at night? OK, so that is not really. Meeting the threat. So let's do this. Boop. Kind of getting them here. I'm zigging. I'm zagging. Using all my tricks. Yeah, the only thing about the thing about the whoop that's good is you can take the band off and I can I can like put they make a little sleeve that you can just put this in and I can wear it like on my arm during jujitsu on like a bicep sleeve or now they make um like boxer shorts so you can just take this thing out of like this little you know the actual sensor and put it like in your waistband so i might try that but yeah you guys have uh fitness tracker recommendations i'm all ears because this thing's not cheap either unfortunately which kind of sucks i almost canceled my order and returned it because they were taken forever but i just let's be honest i just forgot and then they shipped and i was like damn <laughs> i should have canceled that Uh, 
Um, as always, uh, if you guys are enjoying the video, like and subscribe, comment down below. Comment, uh, you know, what kind of videos do you guys want to see in 2022? You know, I've done, uh, let's see, my most recent videos I did, uh, you know, obviously it's Tony Rose, so I'm going to have a lot of opening content. I did the London video. I did the how do you pick an opening video, did a Blitz game video. Okay, he resigns. He's had enough. Let's take a look at this one. I, I want to dive a little bit into the theory here because I need to learn more about the uh, the Leningrad. Oh, see this thing again. Damn, I forgot. Okay. I have to fix this, guys. I'm sorry. I have. <laughs> I can't let this stand. All right. Ugh. I made a mental note to fix this and then I didn't and here we are all right and we're back okay bishop g2 knight f6 castles d b3 d6 very normal bishop b2 overwhelmingly chosen good job tone yeah and then c6 is the main move by far and then queen e8 knight c6 knight e4 are alternatives but c6 is the big one knight bd7 feels very suspicious D5 is pretty close to scoring the best. 54, 54% white wins, 36%. Black wins, 10% draw. So white scoring like 60% there, basically. It's not bad. Actually, knight B to D2 scores better. I'm not sure it's a better move, though. Let me hit you guys with the engine. While I'm just completely destroying uh, my stream setup here, let me hit you guys with the eval bar so you can see what's going on. Yeah, main moves, knight b to d2 and c4. But d5 is in third place and also scores well. And this is what I was wondering about, actually, because I, 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 I've analyzed these positions before, because the way I have my Leningrad file set up uh, in chess base, I obviously haven't looked at it in a while because I can't remember a damn thing. But like, I remember thinking, okay, if the first thing I'm going to analyze is like, how are all of the ways that black can try and just get this move in automatically as a basis for understanding of why he plays the more sophisticated moves like c6 so if you have this then knight g4 i think the problem is knight a3 yeah knight a3 scores 66 percent wins 14 percent draws okay so yeah and then here and if if here then though takes d takes i think if bishop takes then queen d5 check is crushing right because then you get to do this and that's real bad so he kind of has to take with the pawn to stop this or at least allow you know now queen queen d5 check takes takes check king h8 and he's not losing the e pawn at least because one attacker one defender but i think the point is maybe that knight b5 here is really annoying knight a6 rook a d1 and he can't go, he, the move he really wants to play is like bishop d7 or here, but that would probably be terrible on account of this. Presumably if here, rook takes d7, yeah. So rook takes d7, wow, this is gross. This is a lot to remember though, too, like. Yeah, so when here, then he'd have to go something like rook e8 maybe, and here, king h8, let's say. Jeez. Yeah, still here, here, here. Oh my god. But why? Oh, that's so sick. Here? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, baby. And then takes here. These lines are insanity. Okay, like I'm remembering any of this. They're beautiful, though. Let's be honest. Oh, okay. That's the crowning achievement here. So sick. That's so long. I mean, that's 23 moves. Forcing nonsense. But okay, so e5, the point is here, here, and then knight a3 at least. And if knight c6, maybe just knight c4. Computer likes queen d5 as well. And then knight c4. Both look pretty dang good. Okay. Is there anything wrong with d5 here? But yeah, I also remember this being a move for some reason. now of here something like this because we're hitting this knight ah, just this now Whew. 
and we're we're kind of winning. Okay. Too deep for me, man. Yeah, this move is just very stinky. Let let's uh, call some like we see some. Be uh, understandable idea. He basically maybe wants to go here and here, and and now that I push this deep on, he's trying to freeze it without me being able to really push this at least not without accepting a weak pawn on c4 but man is it ugly i mean this is a move that white typically wants to play anyway because um you know it opens up the bishop on g2 which makes it harder for black to go c6 if black goes e6 then you know at least we're opening up this bishop and again this knight on d4 is actually a very well placed piece Knight d4 increases the scope of the knight and the bishop. It's just a very useful move, especially against these c6, e6 breaks. And yeah, this move just begs for it because it just further weakens these squares. I mean, this is kind of, you know, just sort of simple positional chess. If you push two pawns one, one square away from each other with one square in between, it weakens something. It's the same. I mean, this is Leningrad 101, right? Like if you push the d pawn, you push the f pawn, you weaken the e6 square. You push the d pawn, you push the b pawn, you weaken the c6 square. Yeah, and I mean, there's not much you can really say. Okay, this is dubious. Just because here uh, immediately is better. Which is fair, yeah. After here, black almost has to go back. If here, then here. And if here, then we take first. And then go there. Yeah, so C4 may be a little lackadaisical, but let's be honest, it's all crushing at this point. Yeah, and... Computer goes, yeah, B4, but, and then this. And this is the line that I looked at. But, I mean, it, it's it's obviously winning. There's no two ways about it here. <laughs> Computer just wants to go here. I looked at this, also completely crushing. I mean, there's no, yeah. Not super exciting. This is more patient, but again, kind of lame. Now B4 is just death. Yeah, and th this is too much. I, I get why he did it, but it's, yeah, it's, if you have to play that way, you're just dead. And then, yeah, he missed bishop e5. It's all over. Take here, knight e4, etc. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I, 1840... Lee chess is probably like 1,500, 1,600 FIDE and, you know, maybe 1,700 USCF. I kind of feel like the Leningrad Dutch is sort of a tall order at that, at that rating level. It's a, it's a good opening. If you, if you are enthusiastic about it and you're going to study it, that's great. But if you, if you're just going to play it by feel, it's a, it's a sophisticated opening. It's a hard one. The positions are kind of non-standard and weird. I still screw them up all the time. So, yeah, it's uh, that's a bold move, Cotton. And it, what's the quote? <laughs> Didn't work out for him. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah. Well, you know, listen. I I think I'm gonna post this on a Friday, and then I'll be back with another video maybe Monday or Tuesday. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. This is Tony Rowe, signing off.